Hey everyone, it's Nathus, and today I'm going to be opening my 8th or Soulforge Fusion The Last Winter Booster Kit. Um, so I've been having a ton of fun opening this set so far. Um, I feel like, honestly, this is a lot more exciting to open than The Last Winter, and I feel like, from a flavor standpoint, I'm really liking this a little bit more than Alpha right now. That being said, um, I do think that Alpha is probably still getting you the strongest competitive lists, but I think in terms of just some really cool combos, I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far out of set three. So again, with the theme of getting the same cards over and over again, it looks like we have another Alloyan Monolith. Part of me is interested to see how many commons and, and rares there are from each faction. So I haven't really looked at set three, but I feel like it's got to be weird variants that I'm getting a lot of the same cards over and over. So we've got a combat researcher. We've got another forge plate yeti. We've got a magnetic captain. We've got another metamind war warden, which I've been looking forward to. A mobilizing juggernaut. A palladium pulse mage. Shardbound Vexer, Sonic Burst, that's really nice to see, and a Spare Forge Sentinel. And that is paired with an Iron Beard, with Iron Might at level 2, Knockback at level 3, and Shield Slam at level 4. So this list has the Alloyan Monolith Metamind Warden combo, so at least we got one way to upgrade. Um, let's see. Technically, your Shardbound Vexer you give minus attack to creatures so your sonic burst will kind of do some work i feel like this is one of those cards where energy prison i wish was in it or what's the card i'm blanking right now the one that was in every every other one electronet there we go electronet um i wish was in this list for the sake of actually synergizing with the sonic burst that being said um we got an exalt for exalted we've got how many warriors only two warriors for that captain so there's it's interesting i feel like there's not some there's not really too many great targets for your pulse mage here i feel like this would have to kind of open well with like a good um utera upgrade half to really make me want to play it that has warriors and things like that but overall um it's got some interesting control cards for sealed but um i don't know we'll see how the rest of the, the booster kit looks I feel like I'm just not hitting some of the new... Because I feel like the new Alloyan cards are the ones that are, like, incredibly strong. And I feel like I'm just not seeing as many of the new cards. I'm primarily seeing a lot of the older cards. And of the newer cards, I keep seeing the same couple. All right, so we're starting with an Arboris, an Arrogant Wildman, Dendrify. I didn't realize Dendrify was reprinted. Everflow Eidolon, Lysian Shard, surprise, surprise, Overgrown, Shardplate Behemoth, Stegodon Alpha, Venerable Raptor, and Venerable War Tusk. And that is with a Nova, with Nova's Might, Nova's Evolution, and United as One. So... This card specifically because of the breakthrough could, or this this deck could be kind of interesting. We really don't have a good life gain engine to trigger your Arboris. The Arrogant Wildman, I guess, is not bad because you get a lot of attack as long as it could go in an exalted lane. Um, Lysian Shard, again, I feel like we've opened it in every deck so far. But Double Venerable is not super exciting, and Everflow Eidolon is just kind of not super aggressive comparative to the rest of the deck. Um, so, overall... Overgrown might be enough to make this deck worth it, but I would say it's nothing to write home about. See, like, I'm opening a million um, Overgrowns and Lysian Shards, and I think I've only opened one or two Cultivating Guardians. I think that's the card I'm most excited about, and I haven't seen any Preserved Habitats yet either, and I don't remember if that's a rare or a common, but I feel like that card's also pretty insane. So that's something where I hope I start seeing some of those Again, it's interesting. So I guess we're going to see a Smash Fist and others in this, this deck, probably, compared to 
for what we've seen so far. So we got a Chain Lightning. Charger Man with Chain Lightning is really strong. We got Defrost Hills. We got Disintegrate. Elementalist Knight. Inflaming Crasher. That's pretty good because you could deploy to give adjacent creatures attack and then if there's an, an enemy exalt in this lane, give it additional attack. So it's just a lot of attack. We've got a Reckless War Stoker. So far we're in the clear out of our repeat cards. Scorch Main Dragon. We've seen a lot of Stampeding Mongosaurus and we've seen a lot of Wildfire Minions. And a Lighted Sunder. So we've got the Stones at level 2. We've got Frost Axe at 3. And we've got Outwit at 4. So we... Play the Scorsian Stones, transform when it's got three or more energy counters, and then it transforms into five damage to a creature on transform. We've got Blood Bass, you could choose two enemy creatures when either is taken damage, destroy it. And Fog of War, choose an enemy creature, it battles another enemy creature of your choice. So that's pretty strong. Um, so overall, let's see, we've got Chain Lightning with Inflaming, which could be really strong on the Crasher. Um, Reckless War Stoker, dealing damage to one of my own creatures. There's not a lot that kind of synergizes off of that. So that's not ideal, even though it does have Breakthrough. We've got one Exalt for the Maiden. I'll guess technically two if you consider the Scorsian Stones. Um, we've seen Stampeding Mongosaur on a lot of these lists. So it's, again, you got to destroy one of your damage one of your own creatures. But I guess technically your level one Scorch Main Dragon could just be that target for both the Stampeding Mongosaur or the Reckless War Stoker. So this is interesting. Um... I feel like it's probably stronger than the other list that we've seen so far, but there's a lot to be desired, I would say. But I think we're also just spoiled by some of the quality of decks that we've opened already. All right, so we've got one more out of this kit. Then that will be the, the end of our second display that we've got. So we're starting with a Brood Skeleton. I don't know if I've seen Brood yet so far with this opening. So you may give a this minus four minus four to give another creature plus four plus four. So depending on the, the board state, Brood could be pretty interesting. We've got Collar of Souls. Forsaken Mausoleum. Horrific Devourer. I didn't realize her or Devourer was still in the set, but it makes sense. We've got Infernal Ritual. We've got Portal Shade. Restless Dead. Spiteful Shard Witch. Stout Drake, and Azimus. This is with the Nyx, with Dead Winter at level 2, Raising Dead at level 3, and Loyal Beyond Death at level 4. So, this list, I'd say, is probably our weakest Necrium list that we've opened so far. Infernal Ritual is just a really strong card in this format. Um, there's no Spirits. Except Portal Shade. Actually, Portal Shade with Restless Dead is not bad. Being able to reanimate and just continuously pump. Um, so I think this could be interesting with that Lighted Sunder. Um, overall, I think that that was probably the strongest deck that we've had. Um, so maybe you could get some shenanigans going with that Chain Lightning with the Infernal Ritual and the Brood Skeleton and the Zimis and ways that you can kind of pump your board. So honestly, that's what I think I would try. And I'll give it a go with the Blighted Sunder because I really want to be able to flip some of these Blighted Forgeborns. So let me know if you agree with that analysis. Would you pair the Necrium with the Tempest or would you do something else? So let me know in the comments and I'll see you during the next video.